loosen that up just a little bit of work. All right. That there looks pretty good right there. Okay, what we're doing is we're uh, installing the front apron onto our Mercedes. We got it down on the ground. Let's check it out and uh, see what we got. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. front apron onto the car now I didn't screw anything down I didn't uh, weld anything nothing's welded on the front apron uh, I actually had it sitting in there and floating and I went ahead and screwed the fenders on I put the fenders on to line everything up because this is a unibody car and the fenders are what lines it all up and you can see the fenders look really really nice on there so once I did that now what I'm doing is I'm hammering dolling all of this metal back into the frame structure of the car so we could go ahead and uh, get this welded on here so then it will become a 100% unibody Mercedes Benz so the other day we went ahead and dropped the car on the ground we took the rotisserie off and we got the rear end under the car let's take a look at that um, that is completely 100% rebuilt, brand new, everything on it. You can see how restored it is, and it looks really, really nice. So that job is done. We are done with that job. That was a two-day job, putting the rear end back into the car. The bottom of the car looks awesome. It looks like it's never, ever been touched it looks better than brand new if you ask my opinion and I don't think this car will ever see skylight again so putting this front clip on wasn't really that hard um, this is actually off of our parts car and that's one of the main reasons we bought the parts car is to get this front apron here the one on the original one that was on here was completely and rotted and rusted out uh, the parts car happened to be a diesel. I'll have to remove this right here. And then over on the original uh, right apron of the original core support and inner aprons that we took off, I got to remove these brackets right here. These two brackets that we're looking at, those have to be removed so I can put them on the other uh, front apron core support section that we're installing because this is where the battery goes on a gas rig. And then if we come over here on Mercedes guy's side, what's going on there? Yes, cleaning the, uh, the glue, the wash stick. The right. The stripper, the stripper. Detailing. Yeah, detailing. Yeah, what's going on with this? What's going on with this Mercedes? When are we going to paint it, bud? Yeah, we're going to do, uh, we're going to redo the, all the trim of the dashboard. Uh-huh. We sent all the wood pieces. Everything. And Brand everything. new. Everything. Everything. Brand send new. It. All the way to India. Take Turkey, actually. Send it to Turkey. Yeah. Well, with the virus thing going on, be lucky to get it next year. This is a 1966 Mercedes fuel injection drive. Right? Yeah. Let's get in gear, dude. Let's get her done. We got steering columns to put in the car I'm working on so I can get the hell out of here. All right? All we right. got to get the suspension in as soon as I'm done with this. All right. Good luck with that. All right. All right, dude. And that just happens to be uh, one of Mr. Majestic's trusty employees and he actually is the one that's going to be putting this car all back together by himself so he's got a big job ahead of him putting this car back together once I get it all done and painted um, anyway we're working we're getting her done and uh, trying to 
finish this thing up. Old nightmare. Yeah, we still got to replace that quarter panel. That whole quarter panel's got to be replaced to completely rise out. We still got to fix this rocker. We got spots on the rocker we still got to finish. And other little miscellaneous stuff, so we're not done yet, but we're getting there. Slowly, but surely. Alright, I just got done welding uh, the right hand inner fender to the uh, subframe of the car. Now, once again, this is a unibody car. That means that this frame rail is part of the car. It's welded to the bottom of the car and it becomes one. And what happened is, you can see I had to get my uh, port of power out on this, is when you release all of this, this structure, this front structure, when you release that, those arms, those uh, frame rails you might call them, I'm going to call them arms, what happens is they spring from the tension. So to get those all back lined up perfect, uh, we had to go ahead and you can see over here where we installed the fender. I just took this fender off because I went ahead and uh, welded it on the inside here. And to get that back in line, you got to use one of these. And this thing has got to fit precisely because if this isn't spread out and precisely measured to the factory measurements when you put your front suspension on, it won't trail right and the accuracy will be off because what you have under here, you got a basket, a subframe section that bolts up into our arms, which is our unibody structure, and then that uh, uh, front carriage is what actually holds the motor and transmission in. So this is very, very crucial on working on one of these cars. Um, what I'm doing now, I'm getting ready to. welded back on this is what's going to hold I've already done the bottom of it but this is what's going to hold our uh, our uh, subframe uh, this ain't the subframe okay you kind of get the idea here it's going to hold this piece in place so when I release the uh, yeah this thing here um, our port of power when I release that what's going to happen it won't let this spring back um, so it all ties together and it becomes a jigsaw puzzle uh, situation. This is basically toward the end of restoring this nightmare. Um, let me get this welded on and see what happens when we release our port of power machine mechanism. And then, once we get everything welded, now I'll come back and um, grind all the welds down make it look really pretty for him. Uh, the problem you have when you're restoring this and you're using used stuff, all right, uh, first of all, you got to drill all the spot welds out from the original piece that you took off, and then you got to drill all the spot welds out on the piece that you're going to use, and then by the time you put it together, they kind of line up half-ass, but they don't line up perfect. So it makes you go to an extremer type of a weld to get it all to line up properly. So um, hopefully he'll never get in a wreck with this because the next person that works on it might have a bit of a challenge getting that uh, tab off of the uh, core support to fix it. But then on the other hand, I don't think he's ever going to drive this car, so go figure. Let's go ahead and release our port of power. And as we do that, we're going to watch this frame rail to make sure it doesn't move. 
and we can see that that frame rail stayed right in place and it's locked in there. So if we look at the left frame rail, you can see what we're talking about. Look at the gap right here. I can almost put my hand in it. And that's what we're talking about springing back. That's the situation you have. We got this one in place. This one's welded. It's not going anywhere. So we now what we got to do is we got to get all this in place. Before I do that, I got to remove this diesel battery. This was a diesel car that we took this off of. And before I re get this frame rail in place, I got to remove this bracket right here because this bracket's hitting this. And then I got to get this uh, battery box, this old diesel battery box off of the car. So let me get that done. When we come back, we'll go ahead and I'm going to show you how this arm or frame rail, whatever you want to call it, this frame rail will meet up with the uh, inner fender apron. And we know that the inner fender apron is where it's supposed to be because the fender is bolted to the car itself. So let me get that done. Then we're going to take a few measurements and then we'll go ahead and spot weld that on to the frame rail. And then our engine compartment will be locked in place and secure and ready to install our front suspension and uh, get this thing out of my hair. All right, from removing our battery box and also this bracket here, it has closed the gap up. And one more thing we had to do on this particular situation is if we look right here in this area, you can see this bracket right here. I had to cut the lip, and you can kind of see where I had to cut the lip around it to uh, get around that. So that all kind of relieved all the pressure. Now what I got right here is I got my floor jack and then this is actually a hood prop and I'm right in the center right there and what I did with that I jacked that up and if you write down you can see here's a screw that I already put in. Um, I already lifted this up and you can see how the holes match up for the spot welds. But uh, I jacked that up because what I want to do is I want to have that inner frame uh, that inner frame structure and I want it to be flush with it just like it was from the factory so I had to kind of just put a little pressure on it. it's not jacked up in the air real high just to get this all leveled out so we'll go ahead and get our port of power and now what we're going to do is we're going to actually turn it around we're going to turn it around where the ram is facing that and then we'll go ahead and start pumping it up just like this And we want to get as close as we can to the front of our frame horns. This is actually a handy tool to have when you need it. You won't use it a lot, but uh, when you need it, it's there to use. Okay, so I got that in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it won't push on this side because this is the part that's moving. So this will stay stable and then this piece here will be doing the pushing. So I'm going to go ahead and pump it up and I'm going to move my frame rail out to the measurement that I need and then from there it should work out just right. Now, the measurement that I'm trying to get here, I'm trying to accomplish around 26 and a quarter to 26 and 3 eighths. Somewhere in that area and that'll, that'll hook us up really good. So we're gonna go ahead and pump it up. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stop when I get to the end of the thing here where it fills the gap up. And let's see what we got here. 
So I'm going to hook it here, and it comes out to be 26 and a quarter. Actually, it's 26 and uh, 3 eighths right on the money. So that's what we want right there. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up just a hair, just like that. And now what I'll do is I'll get down underneath, and I will hammer and dolly and weld that inner fender well to the car, and hopefully be on the road to success where we can actually uh, clean this thing up, grind it down, and get it painted. Firewall, inner fenders, front structure, have this all painted so we can get that uh, suspension under there and keep moving forward. Now that we got the apron on the car, what I'm doing here is, this is actually the old apron, the original apron that was rotted out and rusted over here, um, and this was a gas rig, this wasn't a diesel rig, but the, uh, the, the front clip that we got, the parts car that we got, was a diesel rig, and the location of the battery is actually on the opposite side of where the gas battery box is. So, um, what we're looking at right here is these are the brackets for the battery box. Or better yet, how about battery tray? Now you see the battery tray bolts onto these two brackets and then of course the battery would sit inside there. But we got one situation, we don't have a battery tray so by removing those brackets we don't know exactly where that thing's going to line up. Uh, without precise measurement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this bracket here and I will tack weld it right there and then I'll take this bracket and tack weld it right there. And what that will do, that will keep me in line of where our battery brackets will go. Now another problem we have uh, with this particular apron Versus the diesel apron, I found one stipulation and one imperfection if we come down here. You can see where this arm right here actually has a ledge that it sits on versus the diesel apron doesn't have no ledge at all. So we'll have to bend that tab up and weld it wherever it's going to go. Now everything else that I looked at on these is actually exactly the same. Once again, this is where the battery was on this one and that's a diesel rig and then over here the gas rig would go over here and then all I'm doing is just tack welding those on there because I got to remove them once I take that bracket grease off and then once I spot weld them into the inner fender well in there these things are going to be coming off so we're not going to even keep those Another thing that I noticed is there's a couple brackets and they're screwed on. We got one here, and then I believe these are for the horns down here. And we got these brackets here that the diesel rig doesn't have. So I'm speculating that these are probably for the horn. I don't remember. And then also the cord support, if many can zoom in. Are you looking at my finger here? Yeah, please. Okay, zoom in on that right there. That's, that's our radiator uh, slash uh, condenser. And you can see there's two of them on there, all right? And if we come over here to the other uh, core support, we can see that this is a little bit different. Um, the brackets for the radiator for the diesel job is different. And one more thing is it doesn't have the little tabs here for our horns. So do you see what's going on here, huh? I guess, Pete, I wasn't out here to begin okay, with. Okay, well, we're working so. on the Mercedes. Okay, look at what we've done so far. Yeah, it looks great. Okay. It looks great. Do you want me to pat you on the back? All right, I got to get that done. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the spot welds off that, and then I will install it on this. And then I'm going to probably take them brackets off that go right here, and I'll weld those on in the correct spots. And uh, we're getting her done. How does it look to you? It looks fantastic. Huh? I had been out here. I didn't know it does was... Does it look like a car now? It does. Yeah. Wow. Still got a lot of work to do on this. Dang. It's Conversion. Good. Really good. See, that's the problem you have when you buy a diesel car for a parts car. Diesel 
diesel and gas don't necessarily mean they the don't same mix. Exact thing. It's kind of like putting diesel gas in a gas rig and gas in a diesel rig. It doesn't run. Well, you can do one one way, but not the other. Yeah. You can go ahead and turn that off now. Thank you. got the battery brackets installed um, I went ahead and put the condenser brackets that's probably what these are more than likely for the condenser and this would be for our two-door and then I also went ahead and installed the uh, horn these are for our horns one thing different about this core support versus the two-door is that it's got the European style bumper brackets right here which that's what he wants to use so that's what we're going to use. So now the front assembly is now installed 100%. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up by putting in the seam sealer that needs to be put in. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the back where it's supposed to be. And then we'll go ahead and paint this and get it done. This was a big job right here. This took approximately, uh, I would say, a day and a half total. Actually, more than that, probably almost two days to complete this whole uh, front assembly, put it back on the car properly. We had to use our port of power to get everything lined up. Um, I'll go ahead and remove the power steering gearbox that was already out of the car and they put it back in. I'll go ahead and remove that and get it out of there. And then the next thing we'll do is go ahead and paint this so they can put the front suspension on it and we can get it all on four wheels like we need to get her done. school classes don't stop till you know everything